the world has changed. 3D printing is in the spotlight and I want your opinion on whether that's here to stay. Unless you've been living under a 3D printed rock, you'll realise that recently the world has changed. Medical supplies have been stretched very thin by the current pandemic, and 3D printing enthusiasts all around the world have been able to step up and manufacture parts on demand. An excellent summary was recently provided by Joel from 3D Printing Nerd, and I recommend checking it out. All of a sudden, 3D printing has gained credibility as a valuable manufacturing tool to have at home. The question is, will its current reputation remain strong enough to disrupt the way that we purchase consumer goods. To explore this, I've got an example that we'll have a look at, and then we'll come back and explore in more detail. In case you didn't know, I'm a total car guy. I've got this sea lady that I built up for drift a few years ago, and unfortunately haven't driven in some time. And I've got a range of projects that I've featured on the channel, including this electric go-kart, and one day I hope to come back to and finish the series on building up a drift mobility scooter. The topic of this video, however, is not about those, but rather a sim rig that I've also been building up for a couple of years, specifically the steering wheel. My steering wheel is mid-range, T300 RS from Thrustmaster, and the thing about it is that it comes as part of an ecosystem. As you can see, you can change between numerous wheels. At the moment I've only got the one wheel, but this F1 Ferrari wheel looks pretty awesome, and there's even some variety, such as this classic wheel, the important point is that they all have this same release system. Behind the steering wheel is this large threaded collar, and if you undo it, the entire steering wheel will detach. The trouble is that this can come loose while driving, and the whole thing feels very insecure. You may have noticed earlier, there is a screw which you can do in, but as you can see, when it's the whole way in, it tears a hole inside the inner part. So the built-in quick change system was not really quick change. You needed a screwdriver to remove the wheel that made it harder to change between wheels or slower to get the wheel on and off for instance if a tall person couldn't get in or alternatively I could leave the screw out and have a wobbly wheel while driving. There had to be a better way. I headed to Thingiverse and while there was a lot of parts listed for Thrustmaster I couldn't quite find what I wanted. There were some quick release systems for my exact steering wheel however you'll notice the electrical connector is missing and the description confirmed that I would lose functionality of the buttons unless I wanted to rewire everything. And then I found it on YouTube, a true quick release system that could be removed and reinserted in under 5 seconds. The channel was Peter Make Things and the best part was most of the parts were 3D printed and worked in conjunction with an inexpensive metal adapter that could be found on eBay easily around the world. The instructions provided were very detailed, there was even a shimming system to make sure you had a perfect fit for any model and an independent review with excellent detail from someone that I trusted. I was in. So I headed to the description to see how I could get my hands on this and it was clear that this was becoming quite popular and that Peter couldn't really keep up with demand. He had a Google form where you could put in your details and be contacted when parts were available but I'm pretty impatient so I went to the second link to purchase the SDL files and print it myself. His purchase system was a Google form, it worked quite well, it had embedded videos to explain what the various options were. Each of the models were £15 each, I needed the base adapter, as well as the TM add-on wheel adapter, and that came to a total of £30. I finished filling out the form, PayPal'd the required money into Peter's account, ordered the correct metal adapter from my local eBay, and within 24 hours I had an email with a zip of all of the STLs I needed, as well as this detailed PDF with a complete guide to the hardware and print settings for the parts. Down the bottom there was also the offer of technical support if I got stuck. So I fired up my printers, making this base adapter ring from PETG and the rest from black PLA, including this optional wall mount, spacer shims in case the wheel was either too wobbly or tight, and then the actual adapter parts to complete the conversion. Now for those important pieces, I confess I spent more time setting up a new Pi 4 with Octoprint than I did cleaning the bed, and I stuffed up the Octolapse anyway. A dusty bed, combined with a really cold overnight print, meant the edges of the print peeled up from the bed and distorted quite badly. So not only did I have to drill out the printed holes to make sure they were the correct size internally, but I also had to spend a fair amount of time with the Dremel tool 
cleaning up the mating surfaces until they finally slotted together nicely. By this stage, my high quality Italian parts had arrived from my local eBay, so I stripped off the unwanted plastic parts and commenced my installation. The base side has four M3 bolts and nuts simply to strengthen it, and apart from that, it bolts directly to one half of the metal quick release adapter. All you have to do is to press some nuts into place with all of your finesse, bolt the two together using the bolts that came with the metal parts, and clamp on the adapter ring around the outside so you have something to grip. This is now ready to go onto the wheelbase using the original threaded nut, and this time I had no qualms about putting in the screw for the final time. On the steering wheel side, we need to remove three of the bolts on the faceplate, and when we flip it over, that will allow the original threaded part to be removed. I also had to remove this plastic casing simply to get access to the plug without damaging it. It was now simply a matter of bolting all of the parts back in order. The same parts are still retained by three bolts, except you need much longer ones this time. The final step is to put back on the electrical connector so the steering wheel's buttons will work with the wheelbase. Back on the rig and everything worked as advertised. I could push the button, grip the adapter ring to rotate it to the side and the wheel would release in about two seconds. Putting it back on was a little bit slower for me because I didn't want to damage the connector, but still, this was a really easy process. No tools required and done in mere seconds. Of course, I fired up a sim and took it for a test drive, and I was pleased to find that everything worked exactly as it should. All of the buttons still worked and there was no wobble, but this mod had been a complete success. This mod works and apart from the current exchange rate making the SDLs quite expensive, I'm happy with how it turned out. I know more detailed decorative 3D models like minis and bus have been paid to print for some time on places like my mini factory. This is the first time that I've paid for a functional part to download and print myself. In the context of that vision, you've no doubt heard that in the future, every household will have their own 3D printer. It got me wondering, should downloading an STL be cheaper than buying the physical part? There was a video from Angus of Makers Muse a while back where he compared a 3D printed version of a product versus a metal one. In that case, the consumer had the option to buy the completely metal one or buy just the hardware and 3D print the rest with a significant reduction in cost. In my case, the choice is between buying the SDLs to print myself or buying the 3D printed parts from someone else. And when I looked into the prices, they were pretty much the same. If I'm giving up my own time and filament to do the manufacture, then should the product be cheaper? Does most of the work go into the engineering and design? It's an interesting question. What happens in terms of buyer and seller protection if there's a dispute? Now I had some issues with fitment when I did mine, but I'm experienced and honest enough to accept that both of those were my fault and overall I think this part was really well designed. But what happens if someone who's new to 3D printing prints this, has similar issues, and then gets angry and contacts the seller saying that the parts just don't fit? If you're trusting someone to manufacture an object that you've spent a lot of time designing to be just right, how do you know that they're up to it? How do you prevent them from doing a PayPal dispute and getting their money back when they really shouldn't? And if we flip it round on its head, as a buyer, how do I know that the person selling me the product actually knows what they're doing when they're designing it? How do I know if it's going to fit and if it's going to be any good at all? What regulations need to be in place to make sure that digital designs being sold meet certain safety requirements? Now this product here was just for a hobby sim rig, but imagine I was fitting the same thing to an actual car. What if I was driving with this at the track, the part failed, I crashed and hurt myself or others? Now that could be a fault in the actual design, but also you need to think about the user side of the deal. In this case, there were detailed instructions on how this needs to be printed as well as the filament required. What if the person cuts corners and uses the wrong type of filament, perhaps PLA instead of a high attempt filament, the part gets soft when it gets hot and fails. With that example, it seems pretty obvious where the blame lies, but what regulations can we put in place to protect the person selling their goods as well as the person buying them? How do we stop digital file piracy? Now, if this product was available in a store, I broke in and took it without paying. It's pretty clear cut I've done the wrong thing and I would expect to have some consequences, but it's not always like that with digital downloads. Now that I have the digital files, it's only my goodwill and honesty that prevents me from putting them up on Thingiverse or even worse, selling them off as if I was the original creator. This is something that artists that create 3D models for printing already have to deal with 
and I wonder whether it's a barrier for paid STLs that will prevent this idea from growing further. Will this concept ever scale up to large manufacturers? Now I understand this product is niche. Thrustmaster won't have any interest in it. They've already paid for the tooling of all the injection molds for their steering wheel and they're not going to alter to something like this. And there's just not the demand for Peter to spend the same money on injection molding for his product either. The internet and in particular places like Etsy are excellent for the average person to reach to a global audience and generate income by being able to connect with a very specific target market. The question is, will this concept ever be adopted by big manufacturers? In the future, if a part breaks down on your dishwasher or your fridge, we'll be able to go onto their website, pay a couple of dollars, download the STL and print out the replacement yourself. How do 3D printers need to be for this concept to be viable? Affordable 3D printers as it stands are more set out for hobbyists and they require a certain amount of knowledge and tinkering to keep them going. Imagine a new 3D printer user who doesn't have a first clue about a good first layer trying to print this, the part failing and then being very angry and complaining. What features must a 3D printer have before it was considered foolproof enough to go into the average home and have an average person be able to operate it successfully? Maybe the biggest barrier in all of this is that the average person doesn't have enough enthusiasm or time to put into 3D printing and overcome the beginner's hurdles. And maybe because of that, we need the 3D printers to do the hard work for them. Now there's a lot to think about here and I'm gonna pin a comment down below with these questions repeated and I would love to hear from you what you think about it. This whole project was interesting for me and I'd probably do a similar thing again because I feel like I have the resources and problem solving skills to fix any little issues that arise along the way. Whether that's the same for everyone else or whether it will scale up for the whole world, well, I'm hoping to read your thoughts on that. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.